Hey there everybody, how's it going? So my name is P0 or PO17 uh, and as you can see in front of me there is a whole bunch of CRT TVs and video monitors uh, sitting in front of you and me. Uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video was because I just wanted to make a really cool video detailing kind of a little bit of my experience with these CRTs and kind of if you're looking to get one what you should do and this is based off my opinions and kind of my experience with them so I wanted to talk a little bit about why you even would want to consider a CRT and then delve in a little bit of some of the things I find that people say that aren't really true <laughs> uh, parts of the CRT I guess collecting world or gaming world or anything so why would you even use a CRT in the first place? Well, that's a good question. They're old, they're boxy, they're really heavy, and they're obsolete in a sense. However, with the resurgence of old video games, so as you can see here, this is on my JVC. This is on my Nintendo 64 playing Extreme G. This is 240p test suite, this, uh, the thing that I use to calibrate all my CRTs with, uh, used through my Super Nintendo. Over there is my Sega Genesis running Streets of Rage. And then down here is uh, my Panasonic video monitor running my GameCube at 480i down here as well. So the, with the resurgence of old video games came the resurgence a little bit with these old CRT TVs. It's not just for Melee players anymore. It's for pretty much anybody who wants to play some video games of this era. And I always want to welcome more people who want to play these video games because honestly they're so old now that they're pretty much a unique experience uh so they're real that's really cool about them and to get the best experience personally i feel like you have to have one of these crts so if you were looking for one as well to have the same experience that i have with these um i guess listen to this video because i have done a bit of not only research in general but i have gone through a lot of these tvs i've owned a lot of these tvs a lot of video monitors heck even computer monitors for that sake i've owned a few of them but i wanted to delve in a little bit as to what you would want what would be good for you so short answer just get whatever the heck you can find honestly as long as it works and it works good it will look amazing for the most part um don't really delve into the rabbit hole like I did where I got this. This is my JVC TMH1950CG. This is a stupidly good video monitor uh, to the point where I praise it over pretty much any Sony that I see, uh, as long as it's SD. And so, yeah, <laughs> don't delve into that. Um, if you really, really, really want perfection uh, in an analog setting, then you would go for something like this. But in reality, you can stick with TVs, maybe more budget-friendly video monitors, uh, or this. This is actually a new acquisition that I've been enjoying myself on. It's a Apex TV, which most people on Reddit would consider as trash, that if uh, you don't see it for free, then don't pick it up, which to a point I agree with, but in essence, no, not really. Um, so what are some of the things that you really need to look out for if you were actually considering on looking for a TV and you wanted to explore the different brands. Well, the first thing most people go to is Sony. As you can see here, this is my Sony Trinitron KV20 FV12. And I have a few other Sonys, for example, my GVM here, as well as my SSM security monitor. Um, and I've owned a few other Sonys in the past besides just these. I've owned a KV13 M53, a KV20, uh, M20, and just a couple other uh, Trinitrons that I can't name off the top of my head. I know I owned a PVM 1953MD in the past as well. What most people will tell you about these Sonys is that they're fantastic, they have the best picture. You know, I've seen some videos where it's like, oh, they're, they're the holy grail. Honestly, that's just not true. <laughs> um, Sony TVs, they are good. I like them. I like Sony video monitors as well, especially this GVM. Are they all that they're hyped up to be? Well, because they're hyped up, no, they're not. Um, and they're actually a lot more finicky than people realize. So the reason why I even kept this 
uh, Sony was because this was already really good. Uh, the screen was well calibrated, uh, the geometry was perfect, the convergence was near perfect, but a lot of the times you won't get that with these Trinitrons. And I'm not saying this on one in particular, but in general, you have issues with the older curved Trinitrons from the 90s, as well as the newer flat Trinitrons from the 2000s. Uh, two different types of issues. One, well, actually, no, they're, they're kind of pretty much the same. The older 90s Trinitrons had convergence issues for the most part, but it's not that it's not fixable. It's just, it's a little irritating, especially when you want something that looks nice and when a lot of people praise the company for making really good CRTs. And of course, the flats, they're known for having uh, issues with bowing, and there's also issues with geometry and convergence as well. Like I said, I haven't experienced it on this one, but I have experienced it on other sets, uh, including my own friend's sets. Uh, one of his is pretty bad uh, in terms of the bowing, and it's a 32 inch. So when it comes to Sony, take it with a little bit of consideration. Honestly, the thing I would recommend with Sony's is to have a friend who knows how to work on these a little bit so that they can calibrate it for you, or if you know how to work on it, calibrate it yourself. Uh, to be able to get the best picture. Because, yes, they do have good picture quality. I will admit that. I like them. That's why I have a few. But you have to put a lot of work into them. They're also heavier than your traditional CRT. They have more things that can go wrong. And in general, they can sometimes be more of a hassle than they are a benefit. So be careful with Sony's. Now, in terms of other brands, I would recommend pretty much anything. I mean, except maybe Funai brands uh, like Emerson, Durabrand... Uh, Sylvania, those ones are considered the cheapest brands. Um, they're not, or Magnavox falls into it. Not the Philips Magnavox, but the Magnavox uh, ones afterwards. They fell into those categories of, they're all one brand. It's called Funai Group. Those TVs are definitely the cheapest, but they will still give you a decent image if you're not picky. Uh, like me. <laughs> Other ones to note, Samsung. I always like Samsung, however, they do have their issues where these newer Samsungs, um, they, had, they have capacitor issues. They don't really last as long as other CRTs. Um, but these Dynaflats are fantastic sets. They look amazing if they work correctly. Um, they have also had issues with the Samsung Slim Fits and then the Samsung Curve sets in the past only really came with composite, so. If you don't mind composite, or if that's all you want to play on, these are perfect. Like, no problem, no questions asked whatsoever. But I know a lot of people who have had issues with Samsungs. However, I love Dynaflats. I own three of them, and I like them to death. And also, these ones work properly, so that's another thing about it, too. Uh, but like I said, watch out for capacitor issues with these. JVC is another really good brand that I like. I own a whole bunch of JVCs as well. Uh, you can't really go wrong with them. This one you might. Um, be careful. I had to do a crap load of work to this thing to get it to look amazing, but once I did, it looks amazing. <laughs> um, but in terms of video monitors, awesome. That one's pretty good too. Uh, JVCs, most people know them for their D-series sets, which I had one as a kid. They are pretty good. That's all I can really say about them. <laughs> Uh, in terms of some other sets that some people really like to bash on sometimes, Apex is one of them. It's a Chinese brand, um, but the one thing that they do is they do source parts from pretty good manufacturers. So, for example, this Apex has a Panasonic tube in it, and Panasonic is another brand that I really like. In fact, there's a Panasonic right there, and here's my Panasonic 32-inch. So, take it as what you will. Sometimes even cheap sets like this, uh, are really good, and this one's composite only. Uh, it's pretty nice, actually. This is a new acquisition of mine, but I'll make a video on this a little bit later. And then, of course, there's other brands that I don't have on hand right now. There's like Sharp, Toshiba. Technically, that has a Toshiba too, but we're not gonna get into it. Uh, there's a couple, like Hitachi is another really good one. Basically, a lot of the Japanese brands, except maybe Funai is really good. Uh, you also have Orion, which there are a few TVs that Orion implanted themselves in in terms of branding. For example, the newer Toshiba sets, uh, especially the flat screens. Some of them were Orion, some of them were Toshiba. They, it's, it's a little bit convoluted. Uh, but they did make their own sets uh, for a time, and so they're pretty good. So... Yeah, and there's, of course, a whole bunch of other brands. There's, like, Zenith, ILO. 
Uh, some other weird ones, like for example, this is my Elmo video monitor. Uh, I won't get into that right now either, uh, because that one's a little bit funky, but just take it as this one is actually surprisingly good, <laughs> except for the audio. The audio sucks. But with that in mind, there is a whole bunch of upsides and downsides to every single one of these brands that I can't really get into too much right now because the video would be ages and ages long. So if the thing is there's no definitive answer as to what you should get, then what should you get? Well, as I mentioned back before, get what you think feels the best for you. If you have options, which I did, you might not have very much options depending on where you live. Just take a, take a little look, take a gander, see if you can find something that looks half decent, and if it's half decent, get it, and, just, and roll with it. You'll enjoy it, you'll enjoy playing the video games on it, I can assure you. Somebody will be happy with this Apex TV that I got for free that has only composite and mono audio. Like, somebody will be happy with this, no matter where you are. Uh, if you're not happy with it, then put it on the side of the road. <laughs> Or give it to a friend. So, yeah. But anyways, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit. It's not so much what I would recommend to you, but what you should kind of look out for when it comes to a TV, when you're doing your own research, when you're doing your own thing. Um, don't always listen to Reddit. That's one big thing. A lot of people will tell you Sonys are amazing and Sonys are holy grails, and they're not. They're really not, trust me. I have gone through my whole Sony phase, and they're not as all chalked up as to what they are. Now, what is chalked up as to what they are is this, that this JVC is freaking fantastic. Um, but nobody will sit tell you that because there's, like, nothing on the internet with this TV. <laughs> also, most people will tell you Sony video monitors and PVMs, etc., etc., are fantastic. This JVC blows them out of the water. So, take it as what you will. Um, don't really look at these CRTs necessarily from a quality perspective at times because if you do you'll end up like me and you'll end up with this video monitor that it looks freaking amazing but then you never play on it because something like this or like this which is not as good is actually more fun to play on because it isn't a perfect looking image uh so that's one other thing that i would recommend to anybody looking into it also another thing don't please don't feel the whole retro gaming thing with these tvs that are that people associate them with I see a lot of times on Facebook Marketplace and on eBay, there will be listings for retro gaming TVs, and then they're next, you know, like $100, $200, even $700 for some stupid reason. Don't ever buy any of those, honestly. You can find yourself a free TV like I did. Is If you look hard enough, and if you're desperate, maybe, I guess. It depends on really where you live. But just be on the lookout. There are still plenty of these CRTs alive including some at local dumps and everything like that, that you might be able to actually go find uh, at your local e-recycling center if they take them. Uh, typically, thrift stores, Goodwill, they don't really have them anymore, but if your thrift store has one, great. Go ahead and pick it up. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to detail, uh, get into detail about with you all. It's just kind of why, like, what you should be looking out for. Uh... In essence, I would recommend pretty much any brand of CRT. As long as it's one that works properly, that's all you really need. In terms of what I actually truly like, it's pretty much just that JVC and, like, I guess whatever the heck is in front of me. Heck, this Apex has really caught my attention. <laughs> like, honestly, this Apex is kind of solid for what it is. And it's a cheap Chinese TV. Who knows? Maybe I might pick up the PF3220 if I can get my hands on it. It's got a Toshiba... Uh, micro filter tube or whatever the really 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 nice one so yeah take it as what you will like i said this is all my opinion and based on my own research and findings of what i enjoy and what i didn't enjoy and yeah more power be to you if you get one of these crts enjoy your older video games properly rather than putting them on a, a cheap lcd or led and making it look like but <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, and if you wanted to see a little bit more on some of these video monitors, for example, I haven't made any videos on these. Uh, I will be making a video on this Apex soon. And just in general, if you need any more questions to ask from me, 
feel free to hit me up in the comment section here on YouTube. I would be more than willing to answer you if I see it. Uh, and yeah, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And if it does help you with your, uh, how should I say, CRT buying or finding experience, then let me know if you find your first or your second or your tenth uh, CRT and how it went. So yeah, thank you so much for listening in on this video. I know I rambled a lot, but hopefully I could show you some nice looped content. <laughs> thank you anyways, and I'll uh, see you later.